because she gets irritated. Whatever irritates Kim, I like Too to do. Too funny, mama. <laughs> so, Hey everybody, I'm Sherry Shepard. Hi everybody, and I'm Kim Whitley. And, and welcome, welcome to... to... Thank you, Two Funny Mamas. I can't say it loud, I'm in the car wash. Okay, this is my girlfriend who is in Cleveland for the first time in history of anybody probably doing a podcast. She is at the car wash trying to see if her car is getting washed. That's the car wash. <laughs> Okay, we, I didn't know, I would have told you we could have rescheduled this. I did not know you were doing it from a car wash. Because you are always complaining that I don't show up. Well, yeah, but I didn't, I didn't expect you to, I'm fixing my face on the computer. I didn't expect you to do a car wash thing. I could have waited. I got to do what I got to do for two funny moments. Okay, the lady left. Because I was feeling really weird with that lady. Is anybody else sitting on that? Oh, there's some more people. Just one person. Just one person. Oh, okay. What is he cleaning up? How many people doing it? Is it two? Ask him how many people. Was it one person cleaning the car? One person on the outside? Here, Mark. Now look, look. It's twenty dollars. Don't you give it all to one person? So you give one. <laughs> He's been two, waving that towel for the longest. He's been waving the towel probably about look. fifteen minutes in your car. You look. blocking cars. This... Okay. Uh, look. I'm gonna get this good American ten dollar, right? But I want to make sure that car is clean. If it's two of them, give them both a ten. If it's one, let me give you a five and give him fifteen. Cause then that'll. <laughs> so if it's one person, let's see what we got right here. Let's see. <laughs> so if it's one person, give him fifteen. Why are you person, my auntie? Why are you my auntie counting the money? <laughs> this is ridiculous. This hand mark is one twenty. Thing, <laughs> I'm getting, no, they not getting the whole 20 because Mark got to make sure they got the stuff up off the floor. Mark said they didn't vacuum it good. And last, okay, if it's one, give him 15. If he got a partner, say here's one for each of you, okay? All right, check the, okay, check the parameters, make sure they got all that stuff clean. Tell him it's my daddy's car and that dashboard had a lot of like ash on it. My daddy a little flaky. Okay, hey, this is the most surreal. You know, when you get old, you get dry. So, you know, it's, it's DNA all You get all dry over where? You get dry well, where? It depends on what we're talking about. If you're like 50 and over, you start getting dry below the waist. If you're in your 80s, you get dry from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. You just one big ball of ash. Everything Okay, dry. I resent that. Matter of fact, I resent that if fact, you're over you 50, will turn you into a pile of dust. <laughs> Oh no, I heard you was walking and squeaking the other day. I knew it had happened to you. I was not. I was not walking and squeaking. I resent that and I refute it. Excuse me, Kim, I'm going on a date with somebody who might be watching this podcast. You will not say I'm oh, dry. Take it back. I'm sorry. I apologize. She keeps lube with her. <laughs> Welcome back, Kim. Yeah, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank I'm going you. out with an Omega, and he said, I'm going to check out your podcast for you to get on here and Boom. talk about walk around with. Yeah. No, I'm glad. You know, my friends said they were on their way back from New York. They took their daughter, Greg Cameron, here in Cleveland. You know, my boy Greg. He said they was coming back from New York, and they said our podcast got them all the way back to Cleveland. They was dying. <laughs> I said, I appreciate it. I was like, you look really. In the car. <laughs> Oh, to no. be sitting there at the car wash, you look amazingly beautiful. I do have to say, you look really good, Kim. I don't have on any lashes. Oh, we got to move the car, too. I guess we can't keep it. You're right. We're blocking cars. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, it was one person. You gave him $15. Did he sing, please? He is doing the podcast okay. from the car sing? wash in Cleveland. Oh, okay. Can, That's you know, dedication. You That's Nobody right. knows anything about oh, okay. dedication and commitment. This is my friend, Mark. You better Mark. follow Mark, Kim Whitley. Hi, people. Yeah, this is Mark. Say hey. Now, this, this has been my best friend since high school, Mark oh. Williams. Oh. We know yep. Mark Williams. Hi, Mark. No, she Sherry said, hey, Mark, we know Mark Williams. Mark was Mark, the person he, that even in high school you were friends with, you made him your assistant in high I school. I didn't make Mark my assistant in high school. Yeah, you did. No, I did not. I did not force him. Mark knew, that's right, Mark knew, he saw a star in me in high school. He said, you know what, 
you're going to be a star. I'm going to be your assistant. Boom. We started back then in the 60s. <laughs> in the 60s. And you didn't stop them. You didn't say, no, 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 Mark, you're my friend. I didn't say, Mark, no, because you know why? Because it made me look good. Mark would run under the Mark. See? Thank you, Mark. Mark always fixed my hair. He would carry my coat. Everybody was like, who is she? I want nobody but Kim, but he knew. He saw the potential. Thank you, Mark. It's because of you, I made it. <laughs> Me and Gerald LaVert. Huh? Me and Gerald LaVert. You and Gerald LaVert, that's right. You and Gerald LaVert. Thank you, Mark Williams. We sure appreciate you. Jerry said thank you. Listen, let me explain something to you. Mark know where the bodies are buried. Hmm? He does. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, because he should know it. So you can't do anything wrong to Mark. Not at all. No, I can't do nothing wrong to Mark. You're right, because he will tell. And I owe you an apology. I wanted to tell you that. Because uh, the Omega sci-fi gentleman that I'm going on a date with, he mm -hmm. mentioned the top five Ivy League HBCUs, and he mentioned Fisk University, Kim. And when he said Fisk, I went, Oh my gosh, my girlfriend graduated from Fisk. And he was like, oh, she's smart. If she graduated from Fisk, you best believe. And I'm like, no, no, let me say her name first so we can stop this. And he was like, he wouldn't even let me say your name. He was like, let me tell you about the girls who go to Fisk. They are super smart. They're entrepreneurial. They are usually successful. Whose hand is that? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Don't. Oh my God. Wait a minute. What? Wait a minute. What was that thing it, that came it. in front of the camera? Stop it. It was a bunch of ash no. and planet of the... I'm not even no. going to finish. I can't wait a minute. What was that? Just move on. Just Who? move on. So what were you saying? What were you saying? Please tell whoever that was, don't do that again. That's <laughs> I'm not even uh -huh. gonna explain to the listeners because okay. Kim gonna get upset. I, I just want to yeah. say to you, he was going on and on about the women from Fisk. And I said, also, she's a Delta. And he said, what? Because he's an Omega, Psy. Mm -hmm. Bye. He's a Q. And uh, he said, she's a Delta and she graduated from Fisk. That's a friend right there. And she's smart, isn't she? And I went, well, you know, you know, yeah, she's smart. He said she's got it together really? and she's she's probably an entrepreneur. And I was like, yeah, well, yeah. And the only thing I could throw in there was, yeah, but she got ADD. I do have that. Hold up. I was just looking for my brush when you said that. Oh, no. <laughs> I, right. so I, I, I want to apologize to you, friend, as you brush your hair mm -hmm. with that Barbie brush. <laughs> <laughs> I want to apologize to you because when I said it was Kim Whitley, he said no. And then he started talking about how beautiful you were. And I was like, excuse me, hit the microphone. You're taking me out to dinner. Uh, hello, hello. Honey, all the men know when they take you, they take me. We come as a package deal. And he said, married, I'm going to be right there. Again. He asked if you were still a confirmed bachelorette. <laughs> That's what he asked. He said, is Kim still a confirmed bachelorette? I said, why you want to know? Confirmed? Wow. Not when Chris I said, why you want to know? Hey, Chris. Hey. And what do you say? And what do you say? I said, I said, Kim has about four engagement rings. She's never gone through with the marriage, but everybody still wants it. You look beautiful, Kim. You look you really know, I good. I really appreciate that. Because I don't have on any lashes, no real makeup. I'm in Cleveland struggling, child. I did take a Maybe shower. Maybe that's why, you know, because you're back home. Maybe it's that Cleveland air. I'm relaxed. That's recharging you. And Cleveland family. air. And maybe because you're family. with your family. I'm, I am with my family, but I'm stressed out right now. Then just tell me about this date, and then we can go back to my family situation. No, just that I owe you an apology. I I, I miss I misjudged you, and you kept saying you were from Fisk. And you, ne you, you know, I know you're always trying to raise money for Fisk and for your Deltas. But he talked about the women from Fisk. So be and I said, well, I don't know why you separating Kim because she didn't marry. I said, Kim could have been like the former Mrs. Clarence Thomas. Like she could have been yeah. like the former Mrs. John Lewis. Like Kim could have been, you know, like, and he said, but she's really smart, Sherry. And I went, I know. That's my friend. Uh, did, he, did he talk about how pretty the women are from Fisk? 
we are one of the, we had the prettiest women from Fisk University. He That's why my daddy he sent did. me there. He said, go be with your people. <laughs> he did talk about how beautiful the women from Fisk were. So everything that he said, I was like, you know, I got to go apologize to my girlfriend because I talk about her so bad because she's everybody in her family's architects. He knows your brother. Went to Howard and uh, he graduated from Dillard. To... No, no, he graduated from oh. Dillard in New oh, Orleans. Oh, okay. Then I bet you he know Nikki Jennings. Ask me if you I know will Nikki. Add. Look, I'm not going to be spending Nikki. all my time. I'm not going to be spending my oh. whole date talking about people you know oh. on this date. Okay. This is a really good date okay. I'm going So, on. did he huh? say, why did he ask you, was I still single? I need to know. You ain't answer that. He wants to know if you were confirmed bachelorette because that's the word around town. <laughs> That's the word around town that you, actually it's a good thing, Kim, that everybody wants you, but you don't, you don't want nobody. That's the problem. You sound like my mother. I do Look, ain't nobody saying you, you ain't nobody saying you a hoe, Kim. They say you don't want nobody. You, you get That's them true. and you I, drop them and you leave them. You love them and you leave them. That's the word around town. Wait, 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 wait. No, I want a friend. I want my best friend. I don't really want just to be D, D down. I want a friend and then be D down, maybe. You I got want, a bunch want, of friends. What you don't have is the D. You got a bunch of friends. But they married. Most of my friends are married, got a girlfriend. You talking about guy friends? Guy friends. You got a bunch of friends. Uh, don't sure. come at me with this BS talking about you want a best friend. Who do you think you're talking to? We've been friends too long. Well, I was going to say you skipped right I, over it. She just admitted she misses you, Sherry. She misses her best friend. I know. I, you I tell me she thinks she's a lesbian. What? Oh, why are you huh? going to tell people that? I did say that. I said, I, when I saw her today, I said I felt a little gay. I was at 30%. That's all I said. <laughs> <laughs> you, just because we miss each other. You're so funny. I miss you too. And I, I miss you because we haven't really talked. And you've been, you have a lot of family issues. I know, I, you know. There's a lot going on, and we haven't seen each other, and I miss you too, and I drive by your house every day. I tried to climb Aww. over the wall because I was going to leave you flowers, and I realized that's a lesson, <laughs> a tall fence. That's a, yeah, you but you can't, can't climb over, over your wall. Your clothes that you, uh, no, I was just going to leave you like a flower at your door. I was going to leave a flower at your front door just to tell you how much I missed you, so but the dog, I couldn't climb over that fence. Nice. No, that's something no. too high. What's so funny and I is Chris, the she got the gate code, and then she loses it every time I give it to her. Put it in your phone. So sick of you. I lost the gate code, and I didn't want to call you to tell you I was going to leave you flowers as a surprise. So, Oh, okay. I'm going to just throw them well, over I'll the gate. Back. I, I hope that my family uh, res resolves one way or the other. Just pray for us, please. Um, Absolutely. You know. So we need prayers for Kim Whitley's family. we got to... A little mm -hmm. family emergency that she had to fly out uh, for to be there for, and because uh, even though Kim's all over the place, she's the same one in the family, if you can imagine. And uh, you know, so we, so y'all listeners and viewers, if you could send the Whitley family some prayers, it would be much, much appreciated. Thank Most you. Definitely. That was nice. Well, this good. Is well, don't we have seen. a special guest or something? Yeah, this is called. We do. You know why it's called? Because I'm in the gas station. I mean, what am I in? A car wash. I can't be loud. There's strangers over there. Well, this is good because normally you put your feet in the camera. So I'm glad you can't. And here's the thing. Kim going to have to get up out their seat when another person comes <laughs> whose car got to get washed. Whoever sits down gets to be the co-host. <laughs> Whoever sits down got to finish up this podcast. <laughs> That's Perfect. all I'm looking too, because I'm looking like they come and be like, uh, oh, you waiting yeah. on this? Somebody seat? go, yeah, and your car is blocking every car. The man then waved his towel. He did. He had You're no silly. attitude. That's why he only got fifteen dollar tip. Oh gosh, let's oh, introduce yeah, uh, let's... your special guest. You, yeah. We have a special guest on because we always try to support black businesses, and this is an author. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we've got a really, really fun, suspenseful yeah. book, but neither of us have our glasses on. So Chris is going to have to Chris read the has intro. It. No, it's not because of glasses, it's because Chris is good. <laughs> okay, I'm choosing to go with, we both don't have our glasses on. So how about that? What a so life. Chris is going to read the intro for T.T. McGill. <sighs> Smooth oh, wow. as silk. T.T. McGill, that's, that's your girl. Mystery, suspense, thriller author. Book's been sold at Festival Bookstore. 
first book, Sparrow, Water's Edge, premiered to a sold-out audience, featured in a select yes. book tour, author platforms, and screenwritten. Get your copy of the sequel book, Sparrow, The Night Ends, at www.ttmcgill.com today for a pre-order. That's right, signed pre-order copy by 9-11. So we'll have that website up. You all can pre-order, get that done by 9-11. Yes. And we've got our special guest, T.T. McGill, joins Two Funny Mamas. How are you doing, T. everybody? T. Hi, yes, T.T. I love McGill. you both dearly. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, it's so good you. to see you, Kim. So good to see you. see you, Sherry. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful brothers and sisters out there. Uh, thank you for supporting the two funny mamas. I tell you, they are off well, the chain. I love them dearly. Oh. <laughs> thank you, oh, Queen. Thank you. But we are here to we're here to support you. And very excited about this new book that you have written. What's the name of the book? The name of the book is Sparrow the Night Ends. It's the it's the sequel to Sparrow the Water's Edge. And that was the one that was actually turned into a play and is screen written. And so if you're ready to sit on the edge of your seat, if you're ready to stay up late at night and grab a blanket and your popcorn and just wonder like what in the world is going on, I can't put this down and even wake up early to finish off the next chapter. Sparrow the Night Ends is your book and it's available at ttmcgill.com. Get your pre-ordered signed copy Where? today. We got to go ahead and do this. Now, it's kind of thick. Turn, turn around and show me how many pages are in that book. Oh, good grief. Why it says the fifth for, graduate. For, 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 <laughs> for, for, my, for my sister, Kim Whitley, the font is big. So, you know, she requested <laughs> oh, that the font be big. So I got you, sis. I got you, sis. No, right, now tell us, one. General. <laughs> in Sparrow, the night's in. Sparrow, describe Sparrow. Sparrow, Dr. Sparrow Mack is a boss chick. I mean, she is melanin popping all day long. She is about her business, her family, and her her friends she keeps at her core. And her life appears to be perfect on the surface. However, when you scratch that surface, there's some the mystery and suspense. You will find that there are some skeletons in her closet. Oh, this sounds like you wrote oh. about Kim Whitley. You just based this oh. off of Kim Whitley. And I like I it. I didn't. Hey, hey, that's Vegas. You know, you never tell. You never tell. <laughs> that's right. Now, Sparrow, who is this? Sparrow, Dr. Sparrow, who is this boss chick doctor who has it all together, seemingly has a best friend mm -hmm. named Luke. Can you tell us about Luke yes. and, and the things that they're going through? Yes. Luke you is that me. dynamic polar view. opposite. Oh. Polar opposite. Sorry, of Dr. Sorry, sorry, sorry. As a matter of T fact, Yes. TT, TT, excuse me yes, for one second. Just, I, I want you to start again. I, I just need to make a one quick comment. Uh, viewers okay. and listeners, uh, please, I mean, Sherry is doing all this interviewing and thinking she all hot, jumping in. <laughs> She'll never do this good on the podcast, but she's going to be on The View soon for a couple weeks and she all getting ready for it. So let her little pop her little interview questions. Go on, Sherry. I'm sorry, go ahead, TT. Tell them what you're talking you about. You know what? She and, and Sherry, guess what? I will be your first guest on The View, my sister. I got your back. I'm there for you, ride or die. Here we go. Let's there do you this. go. Now, <laughs> we're trying to honor you, despite this other lady. We're trying to honor you in the book. Tell us about you, because you told us about Sparrow. But there's another uh -huh. character of Luke that I'm quite interested mm -hmm. about. Luke is the antagonist, the polar opposite of Dr. Spiro Mack. Just like I just shared about Sp Dr. Spiro Mack, Luke David Armstrong, I'm telling you, he, he, is, he is ride or die. He has a lot of demons that he is dealing with in order to navigate through life. However, him and Sparrow are tethered and you'll find out more why and, and what the surface of that is, but tethered through some journeys that they had to circumvent throughout their life. And he is the one that is the wind beneath Sparrow's wings, or is it vice versa? You have to get the book to find out. Are they romantically involved, Luke and Sparrow? You know what? You would want to know, Sherry, now wouldn't you? I always want to know about romance. <laughs> no. Always. They are not romantically involved. Uh, Dr. Sparrow Mack has a very dedicated husband. However, this external friendship he really just cannot truly grasp the details as to why it's so uh integral into their lives and into their marriage he pretty much wants to 
have his family and do his thing with his family. However, this, this character keeps coming up and he is also mm -hmm. indebted to Luke as well. Ah, so are what are these demons that are driving Luke? In the book? What? Are, what? Huh? Well, you know, you know what, what? Uh, you know what, Kim, I'm glad that you brought that question up and you would have to go and buy Sparrow the Night Ends at www.ttmcgill.com in order to find out. Hey, check this out. We've even got a, uh, a check out the QR code we've got on this flyer here, huh? Oh, yep. you can oh, oh, look at that. Hit that, that QR good. code right that. now. That's right. We'll leave yes. that up. Well, I'm going to tell you. Mark. I'm, we're going to go get it, but I sure hope it's got a good sex scene because, you know, I like, mm. I'm very imaginative. All you got to do is give me a few paragraphs and I'll take it from there. And that's the truth. Well, with, with this not, book, you will definitely be able truth. to use you will be able to use your imagination. But I will tell you this, it is a book that uh, resonates with so many individuals. Uh, we have multiple states actually supporting, we have from Atlanta to Tennessee, to Ohio, to uh, Pennsylvania, to California, just, just all over uh, resonating with this book. And actually, prompted me to go ahead and get this second book out. The first book actually took me four years to write because I only wrote during my mommy me time. This mm -hmm. book um, was a little bit, you know, as, as I laid the foundation in Sparrow, The Water's Edge, it laid the foundation for this book and you will not be disappointed. So go get your book today. I encourage each and every one of you to check out T.T. Uh, McGill on Facebook as well as on Instagram, Twitter, of the full gamut of social media on facebook there is a tt mcgill book club where there is some more vip um announcements Excuse coming up my bad. that was I'm well tell sorry. us something you know it, because a lot of people i think uh amongst our listeners are aspiring writers or writers mm -hmm. and how do you what would you what kind of advice would you give an aspiring writer to start writing well you I'm, sherry i am so glad that you asked that question many times you know, I, at first I considered myself, uh, you know, apart from my day job, an, an author. Then I considered myself a writer. And then mm -hmm. I realized that if I stand on the balcony and look down at my life, I am a creative person. And so there's many facets of creativity, whether it's writing, whether it's journaling, whether it's art, music, singing, what have mm -hmm. you tap into some of those gifts that and nuggets that God has placed in you and literally create a space and time for you to honor that. So whether that's Ooh. getting up early, 30, 30 more minutes in the morning, you know, while you're on your walk, um, have it, you know, jot it, having a journal, writing down some um, thoughts that you may have. Or even, or even just taking a class to learn about what your desires and interests are and then taking it one step at a time, one step at a time, and then your vision will manifest. What do you do when you have a person who says, I don't know if anybody will like my idea. How mm. do I know it's not, you know, it's not you know what? but yeah. I, I, I'm totally, I'm totally with you, and I can resonate with that question. But what I'm, what I'm trying to tell you, you're, you're, no one's everybody's cup of tea. You know what I'm saying? There are yeah. people who like horror. There are people who like fiction, nonfiction. There are people who like uh, various, uh, various movie types, uh, screen written, you know, genres, what have you. Mm -hmm. And so you just have to be true to yourself and, and honor mm -hmm. your gifts within you. And I will tell you this, and that's one thing about this character, Dr. Spiro Mack, she's true to her core and she's not, she's imperfectly perfect in her own right. Just like so many of us that look in the mirror each day, we are unique, we are beautiful, we are gifted, and it's up to us to understand and honor that we, we don't have to be like everybody else. Our uniqueness is why we are here on this earth to walk this journey out, and that's what Dr. Sparrow Mac is doing each day. Well, wow. I, I wanted to say, and you know, we got a chance to do a, uh, a book chat um, yes. And it was a bunch of people on there. Buddy was on there, uh, Renee Lawless. Um, mm -hmm. There, there's the flyer right there. And yes. um, matter of fact, your your friend who was at Sherry's movie shoot, uh, right? She was on there mm -hmm. uh, also. Tanya uh, Holloway. A small world. Mm -hmm. Tanya mm -hmm. Holloway. Yes, Tanya Holloway. So, mm -hmm. And everybody mm -hmm. loved it. They loved the book chat. This is good for a book club uh, pick. Sparrows the night. It's the mm -hmm. Sparrows the night. 
edge. Ends. Ends. It narrows the knife ends. And they yes. can go to ttmcgill.com. Yes, right. and all, all payment book. platforms are, are utilized for it. And there'll be more, inf more information coming out soon in regards to how we support the community as well. Um, you know, giving, I, I give a, uh, a lot during my day job and supporting uh, the community. And this is, yeah. this is no different than what I wanna do in my creative space as well, is to honor and support the community. So you'll hear, hear more information about that. And don't get it twisted, Sherry. You and Kim gonna be cast. You in my lookbook, babies. Y'all in my lookbook. <laughs> <laughs> Tell people don't know what a lookbook is. <laughs> for your movie, we cast for your movie. That's yes, right. yes. Well, thank you, movie. Well, girl, thank you so much. I appreciate you. I am so thank proud you. of you. Um, thank you. I, I appreciate you, thank you being willing to come on Two Funny Mamas and tell everybody about Sparrow, the Night's End, um, where everybody mm -hmm. can get at TT uh, and McGill. It's TT and then MCGIL. Uh, yes, dot com. Mm -hmm. There it is. Congratulations on your second book. Um, and everybody use that QR code that you see or go on there or on Facebook or anywhere and get your uh, copy of this fantastic novel, Suspense. Suspense, novel. Mystery and Suspense yes. at its finest. Mystery and yeah. Suspense. Wow, we yeah. all like a good book that we could just sit under the covers yeah. and read. We have a moment to yeah. ourselves. So thank you, Dr. McGill. Thank you. For thank, coming you. On. thank you so much. Appreciate I appreciate you, you all. Yes, you two queens, yes. Love you guys. Right, thank you. All right. Thank you, TT right. McGill. Everybody, make sure you go out and get a copy of Sparrows In by TT McGill. Now, that we was don't really, really cool. Uh huh. I, oh, I, I think that was really cool because, you know, you and I are working on a book, which we are working on a book. We've been working on a book for the last year. It's just hard to get Kim and I together. I was going to say, and, and how's that going? Chris, let me tell you something. We did the pitch for the book. It's a book about uh, relationships, about being a mother, uh, how we do it. You know, it's a funny anecdote kind of book. How and we do it. How, mm. how, how is how we do it. But we've gotten a lot of interest. We, we got a lot of interest. There were some things that we needed to change on the book. We just ain't even been able to, what's going on? This should be good. She's got to decide if she wants the prime wash or the double bubble. Who's got chains over there? Uh-uh, uh-uh. why I love Cleveland. I thought she was 25. Nope, she is 65. Okay. Oh, wow. That's, how, well, that's you know, why you look so young, being from Cleveland. Cleveland, yep. You don't know. No, my body don't look like her. Like, she, she got a body. Like, she's probably had this body all her life. Oh, when she was born, she had but, that body? Yeah, she was born with this body. She like. <laughs> <laughs> and that's amazingly, that's how you get sometimes too. I do. Our book. I love it. I love uh, it. I'm like, okay, our book has received this. People have really liked our book. We just have to fix some things. We haven't been able to get together by the time we get this book together. But uh, people have liked it so far. Our team. We just have to finish it up. But I love the fact of being able to write a book. I've always wanted to write a book of erotica, which mm -hmm. I, Kim, you wrote Delusion of Cinderella, which is an erotic, an erotic book. And it also has a great message. It is a lot of erotica if you guys like erotica, but it's, a, it's an amazing book. Um, it's called The Delusion of Cinderella. And Kim Whitley wrote yes. it. So I would suggest you can go to, uh, what? where can you go to get that book? Uh, Amazon. How are we gonna talk about another book and we done told the people to go get her book? We because they can get two books. This is still too funny, mamas. We still promote your stuff. You're right. The Delusion of Cinderella on Amazon or Barnes and Noble uh, dot com. And that was kind of Kim that Whitney. was kind of literature with erotica. And I've always wanted to write an erotic kind of because we both nasty, you and me. And. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I wanted to get that but little inner freak out. you have a story around it. But you have to build a story around it. But I have stories, Kim, but I don't want to write it under Sherry Shepard. But then nobody's oh, no. going to okay. buy it because they I, won't I know my, my name. name as big as, yep, I put my name as big as day. And I got to, I'm, I'm going to, I have a, I found a whole box of books in my dad's closet. I was like, what the heck? 
So, uh, yeah, I'm going to take them back to uh, California, you know, because I take them on the road with me. Oh, you're delusion Cinderella. Of the book. No, no, no. When you go on the road this time, Kim, they have things where you just take <sighs> one book, a couple pieces of merchandise, and you scan the QR code, and it immediately takes them to your merchandise store, and they can purchase, and then it will come to them. Oh, that so you're not carrying the road. Yeah, you're not carrying merchandise. But they the want road. it signed. That's the problem. And you have it. It's pre-signed, but you can't. We because of COVID. So like COVID, COVID, right. the way that we used to. I forgot about. So, I, for, I forgot about the uh, the the airline uh, diseases out there. Yes. Yeah, so you're not going to be able to do it the same way. So that's the way you do it. And uh, so it's the delusion of Cinderella. So I, I uh, T.T. McGill gave me a lot of inspiration of actually just sitting down because, you know, I have so many like interesting stories about men, so many, and, and they're really good and titillating and, and, juicy. Um, and they're very juicy because it's like celebrity stuff and they're really juicy. And I want to, I, I feel like, you know, I'd like to kind of get this down. It just talk I want about you to write it. it down too for your memory leaves. I mean, well, before you get, I don't know. You forget. That's kind of late. Yeah. Before you get the but stories. But I think the stories will be really good. So anyway, Kim, I know. Uh, I was trying to figure out what else is going on. You finished doing. You did a cooking show. Can we talk about it? It's coming out, and uh, it'll be for Christmas. It's a Christmas cooking show. You did it for Oprah. Um, that's right, on OWN, but we can't give it the name yet and tell people because they have not dropped it. So we, we can't hurry up and be like, y'all, the name of the show is. It's the cooking show with no name. It's the cooking show with no name. And you did it and you liked it. How did you not eat all of the food? I, because I had a cooking show called uh, uh, Holy and Hungry on the Food Network. And I gained so much weight because if the food was good, I couldn't stop eating. Like I couldn't stop eating yep. and I probably it's gained 11, 15 pounds. I will never, ever do a cooking show again in my life because I don't have any self-control. How'd you do it? See my cheeks. You see, I've gained weight. I've gained 10 pounds, but it's been with the cooking show and all the other shows. I'm not able to work out, but you know, I jumped back on my WW and I'm back in. Um, yes. But I um, put it this way. I had a spit bucket, but then the contestants were looking at me and I didn't want them to think that, you know, I was spitting out their food. So it was weird. So I had very small bites and I didn't have breakfast and I didn't have lunch. So <gasps> I wouldn't order breakfast or lunch. Right. So I would just eat a little bit of that because I knew I was going to get food. So I would eat a bite of each contestant. So I was full, but I didn't have the extra food on top of that. Now, you know, what's very interesting is, you know, I was in Dallas filming this movie and I had to play a blind, uh, 60 year old diabetic. Stop. I did. Yes. She was 60 and I, I didn't read the script until I got on the plane and I said, oh my goodness, this lady's blind. Like I didn't know she was yes. blind. So I kind of find out I was, so I was trying to figure out, I haven't played blind since I was in Kim Fields acting class 20 years ago. So I was trying to figure out how the heck I do blind. And I was like this the whole time. Eyes just a blinking, just a blinking, trying to, you <laughs> oh gosh, Kim, I'm so embarrassed. I don't even know when it's going to come out. I hope I did blind well. But oh it, part of the movie was this woman was diabetic because she couldn't control her eating. And she felt if you took insulin, you could eat anything you wanted. So there was one scene where she had to wolf down a double cheeseburger with bacon. And without any, without just with a, no abandon. And I told you, they gave me a cheeseburger and I said, oh God, how am I going to do this? Cause you know, cheeseburgers, that's like crack for me. And yes, the first and I, one, I told said, well, you I'm to not, get a spit bucket. Didn't I tell you that? You wanted me to get a spit bucket. And I, I tried Kim, but I felt like I couldn't embody the abandonment and the issues that she had of why she was wolfing this cheeseburger down. It didn't work for me. It's and plus I was blind. It it just it took me all out of character. So I said, bump the spit bucket. I'm gonna eat this cheeseburger with abandonment and scarf it down because that's how it feels to me. Ask me how many cheeseburgers I ate. How many did you eat, Sherry? We did nine takes. I ate nine or eleven cheeseburgers. 
because I you weren't was start. Sick. Oh, I'm so sick. I would start and then they would go cut and I would be shoving the cheeseburger in my mouth. I couldn't stop eating the cheeseburger. And then they say, cut, we're going to do it again. And then I rinse my mouth out with water. And then they say, action, and I was blind. And I was blind, Kim, and I, I was blind. And I was like, where you, did you bring my cheeseburger? Where's my cheeseburger? And I always, I, I need my cheeseburger. And so That's he would hand me. Actor? That's your blind he would actor? Hand me, he would hand me the That's cheeseburger. How you act blind? Even Mark want to see. That's don't, how you act blind? Don't mess with my blind, please. I'm, I'm really No, that looks crazy. You don't look blind, you look high. Okay, well, then is she going to be a high 60-year-old diabetic? That's what she going to be, okay? Where's my she cheeseburger? Gonna be high. Hannah, she gonna be high Hannah, the cheeseburger. Hannah, why Hannah? Hannah, Hannah I'm making blind, fun of my Hannah. movie. I'm going to tell you about Hannah, Hannah. so I ate I can- <laughs> <laughs> So I kept eating the cheeseburgers. And then the other scene, two days later, it was another scene where I had to. Sh- they had to show me as a younger woman working at a factory and my son, how I put these bad eating habits on him. And so whenever he was going through stuff, I go, I bought your favorite treat. And I go, I don't see you eating. And we would, we would bond and I'm eating. Now, let me tell you about this little boy, eight years old. He was like, may I have a spit bucket? He did. He said, may I have a spit bucket? Cause that's when you, when you chew and you spit your food into this bucket and they throw it yeah. away so that you don't have to swallow. The food, and that way you don't get gain weight, you, you don't know, get sick. Emerald, constantly. Emerald never swallows the food. Emerald Who? on all the Legacy. Cooks, Emerald Legacy, he, all the cooking shows and judging, he never swallows his food. Well, good for Emerald Legacy. Good for Emerald Legacy. Oh, I'm not Emerald Legacy. Get your head out the camera. I'm Sherry Shepard, and I'm Method. Emerald's not an actor, <laughs> and so I did. I got the spit bucket, but I couldn't stop eating. Mm-hmm. Because they would have a warm cheeseburger every single time, and I and he'd spit, and I was like this. <laughs> Ask me how many cheeseburgers I ate. How many cheeseburgers did you eat? I ate five. I have fourteen cheeseburgers I ate. And I oh, couldn't that stop. Bad. Out of fourteen cheeseburgers, you ate five. No, I had fourteen. No, 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 no. I had nine the first scene, the first 14, day, and then the two days later, I ate five. Che- hold up, hold up. I ate 14 cheeseburgers in two days. Did you take some kind of dieter's tea after that or did you just let your insides rot? I did, I went and got some smooth move, but I was scared that I would be on set and it would hit me at the wrong time. I would have said, you know what? And that's right, I'd have said, bring me a bucket for my booty. That's what I'd have said, bring me a booty bucket because y'all fed me 14 cheeseburgers and they got to come out somewhere. <laughs> I'd have just been in the scene talking about, hey, so, uh, so um yeah uh uh I'm blind oh uh, uh can you bring me my cheeseburger oh, is that how you do uh, blind is that how you do them <laughs> neither one of us do get blind huh so the other movie Imperfect High you guys if you don't open your eyes I'm gonna smack you through the screen <laughs> my other movie and that movie I don't know when it's gonna be out is she sixty and you know who else was in it um Irma P Hall. Irma P. Hall was in Soul Food. She's the older lady in Soul Food. Yes. Okay, got it. Joe oh Marie my. Payton from Family Joe Matters. Marie, yes, I just was thinking about her. She was in it. And they all play younger than me. I, I was 60-year-old. That bad. doesn't make sense. But not, not Irma P. Hall. Not Irma P. Hall. But it was a really good movie. I'll tell you when it, when it gets released. They're going to take it to the film, film festivals. But I have a movie coming out September 18th. And we'll talk about your September 19th show. Sept- Why are you hitting your hat? If your head is in, head. you can't hit your hat. Hey! That does nothing. How you doing? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Tell them about your thing coming out. My I movie, Imperfect my... High, comes out September 18th on Lifetime. Hey! Uh, you guys, please watch it. It's with Nia Sue. She's a little black <laughs> girl from Sherry. Dance Moms. Who is this? Sherry Shepard. We can't see him. Okay. How are you doing? To the right. That's to the right. Steve. Say hey. He Steve. said he remembers me. You can't see? Oh, no. oh, because it's on oh, that screen. Oh, there we go. There, so, Steve. Hi, Steve. How are you? Hi. Hi. How you doing? She said, how you doing? I'm doing very well. I'm good. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Yes. She said, nice to meet you. Again. Thank you. Did you meet her before? I met her with you before. You met her with me. Yes. Okay. 
All right, go ahead. Tell them about your move. That was rude. She talking about her move. Her, is that your son? She just said it was rude. Oh, oh, where is the subway? Because I want to go to subway. Look at this. Hold up, y'all. I'm hungry. Where's the subway? Right there? Mark, you want some subway? We don't. She on a diet. I'm going to get some tuna fish. Well, I, I can't something. say nothing, Chris, because she actually made the commitment and it's your podcast. This, is, this is your co-host. This yeah. is your guest host for the day, Kim Whitley. I'm the guest host for today. You're the special guest host. We almost finished. But you left him at the subway? Look at this girl. I love so it. You can go get, let me get a hug. <laughs> look, look, look. Y'all Let me get a hug. He's look how happy he is. Look how excited he is. Hey, give me a hug. She does have a pretty smile, don't she? Yeah, she does. She looks, she got a titty out, too. Oh, Lord. Are you for real? See, look at her. Look at her. Oh, you see it? She got to cover that up. He said you got to cover that up. She didn't know. She didn't know. And she got Jesus. She got Jesus. Look at Jesus right next Kim, to her. Kim, say welcome to Two huh? Funny Mamas Only Fans. <laughs> Two Funny Mamas Only Fans. Oh, my okay, gosh. Okay, sorry, y'all. Tell him it was right. nice to meet him. Okay, all right. Me, I'm coming over. She said, nice to meet you. I'm coming over to the, get me a little tuna fish. Yeah. But, but, this is the, all right, call this me later. The... You know where I'll be tonight. Where? Uh, with so my in Perfect High, September 18th. Uh -huh, where ahead. you going to be tonight? September 8th. I mean, September 18th. Watch in Perfect High. So you're going to remember from this movie. Hannah. 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 That was my daughter's name, Hannah. I'm not speaking no more about that. My daughter's name is Hannah. It's about a girl's descent into prescription drugs because of the wrong people, because mm -hmm. it's actually a pandemic. And I play her mother. That's all I'm going to say. Watch it. It's a good movie. And your your show comes on September I'm, I'm 19th. Censored. September 19th on TV One. You have uncensored September 19th on TV One. Please watch it. Yeah, um, I just sent the, I got to show you this. You're going to crack up. Well, I just what? find this at my dad's house. And I was like, I can't believe I didn't give them any of these pictures. You know how you go home and like, they didn't ask for uh, like young pictures or anything like that. And I was like, I'll be damned. This is when I should have started Weight Watchers right here. <laughs> You're not ready for this. Oh my gosh, bring it. That's you, Kim? Girl, look is at that, that you? shovel lover. That is me. Don't try to snap a picture of it. I saw you. I saw you try to get it. I saw you try to get I was it. Gonna try, I was trying to get that picture. Oh my no, gosh, I, that's you. I sent that to them and I was like, I wonder if they got time to put it in the show. Kim Whitley. You didn't send it to us. <laughs> no, she sent it to Un uh, Uncensored. Oh, Kim I'm Whitley, sorry. you were so beautiful. That's great. Look at the girl. Look, look how many inches between my eyebrows and oh, my stop. hairline. It's seven inches. <laughs> Kim Whitley, you were so cute. <laughs> oh, God. Yes, yeah, send all those pictures, pictures to them. Seen. They must put those pictures in. I know. They got to put those pictures in. You don't even have those pictures at your house. Bring them home. I don't. That's what I said. I'm going to bring them. I'm going to bring them. Bring them home. I don't have any. Let Joshua see the truth. This oh, was, my God. I had real yeah, there. That that one picture. That's when my my grandmother cut off my pigtails. My parents went to Spain, and my grandmother was sick of combing my hair, so she just cut them both on both sides. And I had an afro, oh. and that's when I turned into a tomboy and ate everything. She was like, ah, clip, clip. She cut my little pigtails off. Your grandmother cut the source of your femininity off. <laughs> sure did. I turned into a straight boy. Right from there. Oh my gosh. If we don't realize how when things traumatic happen to us when we're young, how we carry it or how we no, turn we like you You were a little girl, a little, you know, feminine girl, and your grandmother cut your hair off and you became a tomboy. I did well, coupled with my brothers calling me fat and bald headed every day. That <laughs> okay, yeah, you did you had a lot of issues in the Whitley family. And your mama put you in football. I just something yeah. fundamentally I'm my just said, not sure. She said, do whatever you want to do in life. My mother's like, we should have all the experience. And she said, go ahead, try it out. If you don't like it, you don't have to be in it long. So I said, okay. And when they hit me in my chest one time, I was like, nope, I'm quitting. It hurts. That's hysterical. So. High hysterical. I love it. Did you just it, check your cheekbones? Yeah, because my face is getting fat. I don't like it. Hey, why don't you tell the people, since you've been raising money for Bone, your friend, the comic, 
why don't you tell the people about the GoFundMe? Our fans need to know about stuff too. Oh, that's funny. Oh, now you feel some kind of way? Now you feel some kind of way because you you ain't raising money for your friend who needs it? If I I I was sick and I needed the money, uh, we've got got the We've got the link. You all can just go down, scroll down in the description of the show. We've got the GoFundMe. You can donate to Bones Cause and uh, take care of Sherry's friend. Contribute, guys. He's a comic, very nice guy, a clean comic, Christian comic, uh, and just fell sick. And uh, uh, he needs a a wheelchair for his leg or for his knee. He just needs stuff. And uh, we are trying to raise money to bring awareness to his cause and to to help him out. So if you got an extra 5, 10, 15, 20,000, I mean 5, 10, 15, 20. You know, can I ask you a, a question? No, no, this is a, my best friend of 25 years. His name is uh, mm-hmm. Bone Hampton. He's a Christian comedian. And we met in Kim Fields acting class. He's, a, he's loud in the country. He's proud of it. And we met in Kim Phil's acting class and we've, we've been inseparable ever since. And he used to, he came out with some gas and a broke down truck. And he used to take me around in this truck because my car was repoed. And uh, he's just been doing Who stand-up comedy. that happy and proud? He's, my so, car was he's such a great guy. He's won like uh, the Dove Awards Comedian of the Year. He headlines everywhere. And all of a sudden he's diabetic. He got a, a cut in his foot. And this is the thing, when you're diabetic, you have to pay attention to your extremities because we don't feel stuff like you feel stuff because I'm a diabetic also. The cut turned into an open wound and he never even knew it. And they were talking about, he was in Nashville, Kim, and he had to go to emergency and they were talking about amputating his foot. Do you know that? Studies show, statistics show that doctors amputate black people more than they do white people. And mm. so when he said they were talking about amputating his foot, I got you know him that, back. That started, to that started, that started in Roots. That's when it started with Toby. Remember when they took off his foot? That's yeah. when yes. it started. Are you telling the truth that that started then? <laughs> <Yeah>. I don't think. <laughs> I was like, they're saying, Sorry, all Chris. right. But I think Chris, you're lying. Chris, <laughs> Chris, Chris is uncomfortable. Chris is back to talk about Kim. Kim. Because Chris is going, I don't think that's right, but I can't say nothing. (laughs) Chris, no, good and damn well. That ain't true. But it is true. The rates of amputations amongst brown people versus white people is very, very high. So I got him back to Dallas where, do you know what happened? They they cleaned out the infection and wrapped it up and gave him antibiotics. It was a black doctor, wasn't it? Yes, it was a woman of color. It was like an Indian doctor. But uh, okay. he didn't have to get an amputated. But even still, you got to take care of yourself as a diabetic. He had heart a congestive heart failure, found out that he had 20 uh, liters of fluid around his heart and in his lungs. And his kidneys were operating at 33%. He had a stroke and he is unable to speak. So with all of these things going on, um, his insurance is not going to cover all of his medical expenses and the care that he's going to need while he journeys back. Mm-hmm. Rodney Perry flew out to see him. You know, it was been great. All of the people that have been coming to help him. So we have a GoFundMe link um, yeah. and we'll put it at the bottom. If you just, even if you have a dollar to donate, we're not asking like, yeah. if you got people, our listeners and viewers have stuff to do with their money and they need it. So even if you donated a dollar or $2, we it makes appreciate a difference. it. Mm-hmm. It makes a difference. And so we're trying to raise money for Bone because he's no longer able to do stand-up. He's lost his ability to speak. So he's got to relearn how to talk. He's got to relearn to walk because of the stroke that he had. Um, so he's got to relearn everything and he cannot do stand-up and that's his livelihood. So thank you guys for even considering. Let me, let me, let me, let me, it sounded crazy what you just said. He went from getting his foot cut off to having a stroke. A lot of stuff happened, y'all. Sherry just threw it all crazy sounded. Because I'm, so, I've been crazy. Uh, uh, okay. Hi, handsome. How are you? Come on. No, yeah, I'm going to have my mask on. Sorry. Wait, hold up. Got it. People got to see you. Say, hey, look it up. He only, aren't you only 14? No, 15. 15. 15. He's six Don't foot eight. Like <laughs> wow. Oh, look at, 
Uh, nice meeting you, handsome. Now, anybody else, she'd be like, put your mask on. Right. He's 6'8". Yeah, yeah. He's 6'8", no. and he's young. Yeah. Kim was like, oh, it's okay. Yeah. 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 Six, eight. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. He probably oh, brought wow. it from school. Yeah. 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 He probably brought it from school. Yeah. He ain't 6'8", <laughs> but he tall. He tall for 14. He look like a grown-ass man, don't he? Huh? Now he you look blind. Two. You did blind good when you looked off like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I did. Oh, that it was good. good. Okay, now Stop. now you look weird. Okay, go <laughs> you ahead. Like you're high on meth. Oh my so goodness! Check so we out. also have to give up. Oh we yeah, also we gotta to talk stay. about that. Yeah, but y'all check out the link for Bone, please. But go ahead. We gotta talk about this cocaine. And when did we, it come back? When wait, did cocaine before, start coming? Okay, sorry. I want to okay. ask you a question first. I want to mm -hmm. say, if you're a person who donates a lot of money, is it bad for people to give you a shout out by name? If you didn't put anonymous. And you didn't say, "Hey, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get this ten grand." Okay, but yeah, no, your name but, is showing. No, but what if they? Me. We've had people put in large amounts and just put it in personally to his account that we know. Is it wrong to give them a shout out? Yes, without yeah. their permission, absolutely. See, Chris said it when the white man said, "My daddy said it right." Stop, <laughs> <laughs> Sherry. No, I. That that is something that people may just kind of want to keep to themselves, right? You gotta ask. She's already done it. You done already said some shit, haven't you? See, yeah. I, I told you about. I your need people to know. I, I wanted people to know these no, no, people no. look like I amazing. I told you to ask. You're too impulsive. Well, I did I already. Told so you. so next time they might not give when my foot come off. Now they're not gonna <laughs> give nothing because your big mouth. <laughs> Jesus. Well, it's always about me. <laughs> okay, let's talk about cocaine li li uh, laced with fentanyl. Mm. There's this new epidemic that's going around where people are doing these drugs and they're lacing it with this drug fentanyl. They're cutting the yes. drugs and they're lacing it. And it's got deadly results. And we just lost a comedian. Chris, what's his name? A few comedians. So, no, a few comedians. Was four of them, three of them at the party. Four, but Kate the Quigley is in the hospital. Kate, One of the Kate comments. Quigley, yes. Yeah, she was She's not in the doing hospital. well. She used to date Darius Rucker from Hootie and the Blowfish. Very funny comic. Kate Quigley. Do you have their names, Chris? It was yeah, four I comics who yeah. all performed. Taquan. Uh, his right. name is Taquan. Chris will get the names. Yeah, and they all went names. back. They all went back to a, a, a an apartment to party. They all took cocaine laced with fentanyl and they were all found dead with so one I don't, of the comics sorry, go ahead. unresponsive. You can't find it? No, I, I have it, but I think what happens is people don't know that there's fentanyl cut into it. I don't think it's a choice well, is the problem. Well, well, this is what I found out. That what happens is since the pandemic, um, they have been lacing this cocaine because it's more expensive. And they said the cocaine, the dealers are trying to make more money. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's right. The what dealers absolutely. are that's trying to, figure. yep. So, so they're lacing it, which makes the cocaine be more expensive. Um, where these be other people expensive. are lacing it. Yes, they're lacing it and it's with baby powder. They're trying to, you know. So real quick. So the just problem, the, the problem the people, is because. I'm sorry, go ahead, ladies. Yeah. Go ahead, go go ahead, ahead. Chris. Uh, the people we lost, uh, Natalie Williamson, uh, Enrico, yeah. Enrico Coangeli, I'm not, I'm going to screw that, Coangeli, uh, and Fuquan Johnson all did pass away. Kate Quigley's still in the hospital. Last I saw, she had texted, and I don't know if you guys know Brian Redband, he had tweeted out that she heard, he heard from her that she's not doing great, but she is alive. Alive. And so many people, well, it's, it's a shame. But then because, we have Michael. No, but we, that's a separate issue. That His was heroin. You know, is I it? mean, it's still drug. No, no, it's, it's not still, the, not the, it was, no, I think it, it said fentanyl, cocaine, unless it was wrong, that story. No, I didn't read that at all. I read heroin. I, I read sent heroin. it to you. Okay, okay, I'm going to pull it up then, since y'all both want to be smart mouths. But what I'm saying is, uh, on the separate note with the four comics, what's, you know, we lost three very talented comedians. Here's the mm -hmm. thing. When you're young, you don't 
you go and you do things. You don't think anything's going to happen to you because right. when we were young, Kim, you remember when we would get out of the club, we were in our twenties, we would stand outside of the club all night long and talk. Um, I never did drugs. So I, that was one thing I never did. I did other things, but you never thought anything was going to happen to you. Like I thumb right. I hitchhiked no. all the time to comedy clubs. I was always hitchhiking because no. I didn't have a car. It was repossessed. And I'm very thankful that I'm still here, but it's just so sad that we've lost three very, very talented comics and yeah. um, our hearts go out to their family. It's just, it's very sad in the comedy community what's going on. With Michael Williams, who you guys uh, would have known from most recently an Emmy nominated actor from the show Lovecraft. He was also in the movie When They See Us. He also is yeah. known as Omar from The Wire. Remember, Omar coming. Yes. Omar coming. Omar coming. Such Omar coming. Omar coming. And oh, he has said that he had had a, a, a addiction problems before, and he had gotten help. Really nice guy. Everybody has nothing but the nicest things to say about Michael Williams. And we don't know what he was going through, but they found him as well. He had passed, and he was 54, I believe. And it's just, and you know, you never know what anybody's actor. going through. You just, you yeah. don't know what a person is going through. And I, I'm, he was such a powerful actor. Like powerful. I would watch Michael Williams and go, where do you dig to get what yes. you need to get for your character? Because it was yeah, so was... intense. And I think he really, he was one of those actors that never left it when they said cut. He didn't leave it on yes. the studio, the set. He brought that home with him. He, and was, he had that character. Woo, and that's a hard place he to be He embodied in, but... the characters that he played. He embodied them wholeheartedly. He's in bed. He said that he got too much into Omar on a personal level. He took Omar way too far and had to pull back from the character of Omar. So we just, you know, wishing his family and his friends our condolences. Yeah. Lost that's really talented people to this horrible really talented people and i want everybody to stop the cocaine that was in the 70s it's over no it's not cocaine is back honey uh, you i don't know why that. it's just like any you know, people don't think they're gonna die from it they think they can control it the same way they did when it was out in its heyday and now it's cheap it's not like you're doing cocaine which is expensive cocaine laced, laced with fentanyl is really cheap and people don't think they're gonna die. Otherwise they wouldn't be smoking cigarettes. That's why you see a bunch of people smoking cigarettes when you know you could get lung cancer. You see a bunch of people eating food that they know they're not supposed to eat. You know you could get a heart attack. It's people don't think 14 they're gonna die. hamburgers while you're blind. Okay, all right, I'm, I'm sorry, I went too far. Okay, I, but yeah, you went too far. oh, I'm supposed to look this way, sorry. You need to pull it My back. bad, you need to, I apologize. You all the way back. Okay. Okay. You back? All right. So we're just saying, um, you know, Lunell wrote a really great post and she said, instead of doing, she said, go drink liquor, do gummy, smoke weed. She said, find another way to have fun other than the drugs, which is kind of what you're saying. Stop doing cocaine. Like find something else that's just not going to kill you. Well, liquor can kill you. Know what I'm saying? You can, you can, if you're an alcoholic, you mess up your liver, you can die from that. Too much of anything, eating 14 hamburgers on the set. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, you but back eat, there. Too much I of told anything. you to pull it back. All right. I, you did. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I apologize again. But what I'm saying is this. That's why I said, you don't anything. say, you, you never say you're sorry. You say, I'm apologizing, and then you do it again. I don't know. Because you're really not sorry I'm, for it. That's why you say, I, I apologize, because you don't mean it. So this is what the problem is. We talking about other people's problems right now. We ain't gonna talk about ours. But I'm saying, we, don't we, say I apologize because you don't mean it. Twice you 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 said because something that's the word I do me. upon. I apologize is and it don't mean nothing. More, no, I apologize is a more intelligent way of saying I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just no. So below we're not gonna get into bar. it. We're not gonna get it's into like, it because it's not like, about us. It's like. 
not graduating from high school when you say, I'm sorry. But when you say, I apologize, it's like you got a PhD. No, when you say, I apologize, you got a PhD and I don't mean it. And you said twice, twice you said something that pissed me off. And you went, I, I apologize. Okay, I got it once. Then you said it again within freaking four seconds. You went, I apologize, which means you don't mean it. But when you say, I'm sorry. It does mean that. No, it doesn't no, mean um, that's your want to stay on it. That's We've gone through us. this again. It's not about us. We were talking about it's other people. About so pull it back. I, it's back. It's pulled all the way back. All right, let me straighten up my cross. The Lord ain't helping me right straighten now. Straighten up my cross, because <laughs> the Lord knows you don't mean it. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. All Thank right, you, we, we, I got to, I got to go to Subway. Oh, Not man. that I'm hungry. Well, I gotta huh? finish eating my dog on food too. I got a spot yeah. tonight. I got to I got to go to the out to all of Michael Williams and all of the comedians. We yeah. pray for Kate Quigley that you come back from this, and you know, sorry about the loss of your friends. But everybody who's doing that, find another way. And maybe we need to check up on our friends. I'm not sure if checking up on our friends once will do it. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you call and I don't answer the phone. I don't feel but like talking. But it's also to you. this. No, you're right. But also this. If you at a party and people are like, just try it. Stop, to stop and think first. But what happens if you start drinking? You'd be like, all right, let me go ahead. However they do it. I guess they snort it. But you don't know what's in that. And that's the truth. Yeah, you don't. Every time you're playing Russian roulette just like you sleep with somebody without a condom you don't know what's in them for real yeah same thing oh, oh wow but i tell you what a piece of raggedy dangling ain't gonna kill you okay okay i'm sorry i'm sorry thank you you sorry. sorry see i'm sorry i'm sorry i like car wash kim <laughs> i like car wash kim oh god that's what happened car wash chronicles oh no. <laughs> yes the hey, hey young, young the man, come over here. Yeah, pull somebody over oh. that's working. Be like, tell me about this. Oh, this we is, uh, what's this? What was, oh. No, we in the car no. Wash, we can't really do our podcast the way we want. We sure appreciate you giving us the time. Oh, wait. Yes, I do. But you know, I want to say happy anniversary to Sally Richardson and Dondre Whitfield. 19 years married. They have been married yep. 19 years, but they've dated five years before that. Dondre Whitfield and Sally Richardson Whitfield. Yeah. No, Sally Richard. People. Sally Richardson, Sally Richardson Whitfield have been yeah. dating, have been together for 24 years. They have two children. And I remember Sally was doing a show that I was on called um, Less Than Perfect. It was Dondre, not Sally. Dondre played my boyfriend because we kissed. And do you know, he was so into Sally because Sally used to come to your comedy club, you and Buddy's comedy club, the Ha Ha. <laughs> And he met Sally They was coming to the Ha Ha. And he told me one night, girl, because he used to have a motorcycle. Uh -huh. And he gave a ride on a motorcycle. And I remember he said, Sherry, we, the heat between us was so on fire. And he told me about how they kissed for the first time. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And that's when he told me he was like, I'm just so like, she just turns me on so much. And that's when Sally had that long oh, hair because she heart Indian. And it was so wonderful to hear Dondre talk about her that they're together 24 years later. Two kids, yes. she's now a director. He's an actor yes. and an author. And he gave and he's her the on most- Queen Sugar right Not now. any longer. He's not on Queen Sugar anymore, but he was a regular on Queen Sugar. You need to turn your TV on and stop watching everything, uh, only uh, Raising Whitley episodes. I Hello? just watched it the other day. Oh, maybe I was, was a season reader. behind. The new season is this week. Okay. Yeah, then you need Got to watch it. the new season. He's not on Queen Sherry. Sugar anymore. Yes. So I went back and watched Kim on the Wayans Brothers in that, uh, <laughs> in that, in that parody. Where she played the really <laughs> ugly girl. In the parody that she talked about. Guys, get, do yourselves a favor. Get a BET Plus subscription and go back and see these TV shows that comes in. So say it the white man. Get a uh, BET Plus subscription so you can see all of the shows Kim is in. I'm on it. I'm on it. BET Plus. Kim Whitley. <laughs> That's hysterical, Chris. All right, y'all. Uh, we're going to wrap it up. We gonna wrap it up because we have to. Uh, I gotta go. Uh, I gotta. I got a uh, spot tonight at the comedy club, and you gotta go. 
because you got stuff to do. I love you, and I'm so glad you uh, gave, you know, because everybody was wanting to know when you were coming back. Oh. I'm, I'm coming back. I'm glad that I'm back. It's and just so to great. let you know, we didn't even do it. Neither one of us did the podcast last week. We had two guest hosts. Did you know that? She knew that. I forgot all about it. Jesus. We Because you no, couldn't do working, it. Chris. And I couldn't do it. You was working. And I called Chris at the last minute. I said, I can't do the podcast. I had to rush to the I airport. You were doing it last week. You no, because I had to go see it. Bone. I had to rush to Dallas right away. You know who we did the podcast? Medical emergency. Ooh. It was a medical emergency. We both had medical emergencies for the first time in history. B flat. You know Yamanika? Yeah, I love you Yamanika. B flat and Yamanika did two funny mamas. Neither one of them <laughs> have us got kids. <laughs> Chris called me. Hey, mama. Look, Kim, I got to tell you this. Chris called me. He goes, uh, Sherry, just want to know. They said uh, the N word a few times. Uh, did you want me to let it go? <laughs> I said, no, bleep it out. Let These me tell you two something. I'll give you the behind the scenes cut. And we do have a photo of uh, of the episode last week that will pop up here in just a second. But oh my God. real quick, so Sherry, cool. that was the, the part of it. The actual edit notes belong in uh, the comedy hall of fame <laughs> because we're talking, I can, I could probably pull it up. Maybe I'll... I'll at, we'll we'll check it out next week. But I have the edit. Next notes. week we check it out. When I say it was two pages of B says the N word here, please bleep that out. And I, <laughs> I thought it was like I I think my exact words were to Sherry. I think they said it like four times. Hey, you guys have said it before. It's not a big deal. Sherry's like uh uh out of there. And when I say I cut out, I cut I I made the notes for key. And Key's keen ear, she has a better ear for the N-word than me, uh, <laughs> caught four more. <laughs> caught four more. And uh, so we had two pages worth of N-words that needed bleeped. And then I went That's ahead and I made, a, I made a call. We don't ever edit anything on here, but I went ahead and thought, you know, mf -er and uh, <laughs> was said quite a bit. We'll go ahead and get rid of that, too. I think we have that picture in the email Is that, that pop up. Oh. Oh my gosh. That is hysterical. Yeah. So those but I notes. I have to tell you, cursing aside and inward aside, both were so. They said to tell you, Kim, they were so thankful that you allowed them to host two funny oh, moments. They were yes. so excited to do it. I will send you the text Yamanika sent, and B Flat was Yamanika. so grateful. The, but it was this in the first time in our history we've never done our podcast. Not one of us, B Flat wow. and Yamanika held it down. So we want to thank them for doing that for us. Thank we you both so had much. Family emergency. And I love, yep. I love and, both of them. Um, they were so happy that you guys had the patience and the grace for them. So thank you. B I got to go back and, and watch the podcast now. Oh, so oh, wait a minute. You ain't never seen that one podcast. We've done 68, 67 podcasts. I asked you to watch it for a year. I've been saying, Kim, watch our podcast because it's so darn funny. You so funny. I'm you never it. watch it. But you're going to go back and watch B Flat and Yamanika? Yeah, here, awesome. look, I'm in let's our podcast. Picture. I'm in yeah. it. No, Kim, you need to watch this one. Nope. That's not. Oh, those are the that's edit everybody's notes. Everybody's personal information. Oh, okay. Those are the edit notes. They I put a picture. I sent a picture to the email, but throw, show the edit notes again. Look at this. <laughs> this is a show. That does not have. I should have never said to be flat and Yamanika. Just be yourself. <laughs> I, why'd you tell them that? You know the rules. I just forgot. But they did. I mean, literally, Yamanika right, came on within that. 20 minutes of B flat asking. I asked B flat, she's about to go to bed because, you know, they're three hours ahead. She's about to go to bed. So they took it, they did it for us. So we got to send them a gift or something. I'm but anyway, we both got to go. Because I got to get my tickets for Dallas. I got to get back yeah. to Dallas. We're praying for you, Kim. Praying for your family. And Thank praying you that so you much. don't get cussed out because your car didn't block every other car at the car wash. And there's people right, waiting to sit down in your the seat. Look, look. Still at the, they got my car right there. Call. The car right, is I got sitting to, there. You silly. All right, girl. I love you. We got to right, go. Who is, love who is behind you? Edie said hi, Edie. Kim. Edie. Oh. Hi, Edie. I love you. You know she can get on camera. You're supposed no, to be on camera. Thank you. All right, Mama. You guys, right, thank Chris. you for tuning in to 2FunnyMamas. Uh, go to buyjag.com slash 2FunnyMamas mm -hmm. to get the merchandise. And uh, check out uh, ttmcgill.com, her book. 
Sparrow, The Edge of Night, and Kim's book, The Delusion of Cinderella. And uh, I think September 18th, Imperfect High on Lifetime, and September 19th, Uncensored, The Kim Whitley Story on TV One. And uh, yeah, that's it. So thank you guys. Bye, Make Kim. Sure, love ladies. you. All right. Two funny mamas. Two funny mamas.